Hello, my name is Michael and I've been using Lightshow Pro to finish one of the sequences I've been working on and wanted to show you a couple uh, techniques that I've been working on that have been really helpful to me. And I'm just going to kind of show you the sequence uh, as it is right now and kind of just walk through some of the things that I've been working on. So the first is I've been using layers to group all of my controllers. And I have lots of different layers for the key elements in my show. And using the layers has allowed me to filter out all the different controllers. It makes it easier to work with certain elements one at a time. So if I look, I can select stars, and then it will show me the controller where it has all my stars. And then if I select reefs, it will show me the different controllers that are associated with the reefs. And so here I have uh, three LOR controllers, plus I have PixelNet. Lightshow Pro, when you add layers gives you a couple different options. One is just to add a, a new layer and then you can associate either a channel or a controller to the layer. Or there's two other layers that will automatically associate all the RGB lights to a layer or this one will associate all the static lights to the layer. So I've used that here where I have all of the RGB and this is great when I want to apply a transition over all of the different RGB elements in my show. The other thing I've been using are highlights and highlights makes it easy to place different markers and then be able to add effects at precise locations within the show. So I've used markers for trees and so I'm going to just play this section here and you can kind of see the trees and watch the, the lights within the tree. So trees to the white and then the green kind of bounces from the left over to the right and then they kind of alternate colors and sync. And the way I did that was I used the highlights to find those exact locations. So I picked the marker color, so I selected yellow and then I went over to the effects tab and selected touch mode. In touch mode then I simply scrub across the audio and I listen for the areas where I want to insert a new effect. And I can scrub back and forth and I can kind of just listen to the, the tones and the music and the beat. And then when I find the exact location, I simply press the left mouse button and then it inserts the marker. And the nice thing about using highlights is you don't have to be too precise because you can always go back and adjust those later. So I can switch back to select. And then once I am in select, then I can select the actual marker and then be able to drag and drop it into its new location. And so I can zoom in a little bit here. And we'll scroll over. And then I'll grab this section here and be able to move it. Okay, so I'm, now I've grabbed it, and as I drag it, you can, one, you can hear the music. And then it's also moving all the effects with it as well. So even though I've, I've placed the effects, I have the ability to, to change them easily. Now, when I added the effects, I used active mouse mode, and that's found under options, configuration, and then active mouse mode. And with that set, when you add an effect, it will automatically apply it between the two markers. So let me give you just one quick example here. So I'm going to add a ramp up effect, and I'm just going to click in the middle here. And you see that it's just adding the effect within that particular range. So I'm going to go ahead and undo those since I don't want them in my show. The next is using transitions. And so Originally, I thought transitions were really only helpful for RGB, but I've been finding them really helpful for incandescent lights as well. And so this is an example where I've used RGB. And let me just play this back. So I have this LED mega tree in, in the middle, and I can select patterns for it. But I also have trees that are wrapped in three different colors. I have red, white, and green. And Using transitions, I can automatically sequence sections of those shows as well based on those colors. So the following is an example where I have my reefs and I have some of the 3D stars. And we'll kind of scroll over that and see how I'm using transitions for that. 
And then let me show you a section where I've been doing that for incandescence as well. So here is an example where I wanted to do a wipe through the whole house. And it just kind of does a building. And you can see that it's red and it builds up for the entire house. So all my trees that are wrapped in red lights will turn on. And then it will switch to all the elements that are green. And so transitions have allowed me to create some unique patterns uh, very quickly and easily. So here, here's another example where I've got a bunch of RGB, but then I also have the incandescents that are automatically programmed using the transitions. And let me just click on one of these and show you how I've done that. So in this example here, I'm on the static and I've used the red the circle and then I'm saying map to stage. And so this applies the effect over my entire uh, yard or an entire front of the house versus being targeted at a particular element. And I selected the circle and then gave it 15 frames, said map to stage and said okay, and then it would generate the effect necessary. And it's, it creates this really cool effect where it kind of wipes it out from the middle. You can kind of see the, the, the trees kind of disappear as if they were in the circle. Here's a, another pattern. And then here's another example where I've used the... Uh, okay, this one's a little different than the other one. So this is an effect that is just a flashing effect. And what I've done with this one is I've applied it to my house lights. And the effect there is that it does this chasing pattern. And you can see where it ramps up and ramps down and it just does this little chasing pattern for the house lights. And so instead of having to use patterns and copying and pasting and such, um, I simply add the transition, drag it across, and then the transition does the, the chase effect for me. So with this sequence, I'm still not finished. I still have uh, quite a bit more work to do. Um, but with Lightshow Pro and using some of these techniques with the layers and then using transitions, um, it's made it a lot easier to create the sequences. I hope this little tutorial has been helpful to you. I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone does this year for their show. Thanks. <laughs>